Welcome back, everyone. If you are interested in seeing how I go about watering my collection of cacti and other succulent plants, some of the tips and tricks, some of the tools, when I do it, how I do it, then this is the video for you. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to my greenhouse. My name is Joe. Today's video is all about watering. Watering my cactus and succulent plant collection. Okay, first of all, where does the water come from? I'm collecting rainwater from the greenhouse roof and there is another roof, a part of the roof from the house connected to that collection scheme that runs off the roof of the greenhouse and then straight into a 300 litre rainwater collecting tub. Now how do I get it out of the uh, tub? It's via a pump. Here's the water pump, which is submersed in the water tank. And uh, it basically draws, it's an electrical pump. Here's the uh, connector, the plug. And uh, I'm gonna just plug that in now. Right, there's the uh, power connector and the electricity actually, uh, this is all coming from uh, photovoltaic solar power panels uh, on the roof of my house. So getting the uh, power here straight off the sun. And then the pump draws the water through a hose and I use this uh, watering nozzle. It's a really good uh, quality, I find. I use it from the uh, Japanese company Takagi and uh, that's just a personal favorite of mine. By the way, I'm not getting any uh, any subscriptions or payments or anything like that from them. It's uh, just something that I thought I'd uh, share with yourselves. Uh, the nice thing about it is, first of all, um, I've got it connected to my water pump, which is an automatic water pump. So as soon as I press on the uh, uh, distributor here, the pump starts up. And uh, as you can see, pulls the water through the hose. Uh, I've got a pretty strong uh, power here. So this is not so easy to do with one hand because I've got the uh, video camera in the other hand. But, uh, you know, you can see here, there is actually this little knob here which I can turn and regulate the amount of water coming through the, uh, the nozzle. And let me just... You know, turn that until it's got about the amount I want to sort of a gentle stream of water coming through that's probably pretty good now maybe a little weaker even there we go I think that's perfect now let's you know as soon as I release this here the water stops uh, so the pump is still on for maybe a few seconds and then it automatically switches off. You can probably hear the pump in the background. There you go, now it's off. And I press on here and it's automatically starting up again. There you go, fantastic. Okay, let's get watering with the plants. I've got the water tank right outside of the greenhouse door, 
So the hose, just a few meters for me to get inside. And uh, you know, here's the, the main display table and we can actually start just on one side and I'll start watering. Just, uh, this is the way that I would water my cacti. And uh, you know, you can see it's, there's no magic to it basically just watering nicely around the plants until the substrate is properly soaked. Any excess water will actually, you know, percolate all the way through to the drainage layer of the, uh, this display bed, as you might have seen in my dedicated video to this you know, how I built the display bed. And so any excess water will just percolate through and right out the uh, drainage layer at the bottom of this bed. And it'll then just run right through and uh, basically just not cause any water logging or any uh, flooding in the uh, growing trough. So a nice soaking, maybe one more, one more go here. My Notocactus or Parodia Magnificus and uh, there we go, nice summer shower for the cacti today. It's uh, the end of the day, it's not too hot anymore, it's the evening, and uh, that, in my view, and I think the view of many other uh, cactus growers, you know, is a pretty good time, maybe the best time to actually be watering your plants, because of the special uh, way that cacti photosynthesize, uh, you know, the main activity there in the plants, this uh, method of CAM, the uh, Crassulin acid metabolism, as it's called, uh, and I'm not going to go into the details here, but and there, there's actually quite nice videos on the topic on the uh, on YouTube as well, uh, but because of the this feature that cacti and many other succulents have, that means that you know, the plants are most susceptible to taking on water in the evening, ready for the night, basically. Quite a number of growers also, you know, water during the day that's okay as well, but I would definitely not recommend you water during the hottest time of the day. So, you know, noontime, midday, full sun, definitely not a good time, not a good idea to be watering your cacti during that time, the hottest time of the day, and especially if they're uh, standing in full sun. Just wait until the sun, the sunniest and hottest time of the day is over and then towards late afternoon, early evening if you water at that time especially during you know, nice warmer weather periods then uh, that's ideal really for the cacti because then they they can also uh, take on the water during the night and they also at the same time the substrate nicely as a chance to dry out relatively quickly again as well. Right, I think that was a good showering of the uh, cacti in the main bed here and uh, if I move to the back of this display bed that's where of course I've got a number of aloes and uh, warthias and other 
non-cactus succulents. They'll need a little bit more water. And actually what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just turn the knob a little bit. I hope I did it in the right direction. Nope, that was the wrong. It got weaker. So there we go. That's good. So I've adjusted this, as I say, in... Uh, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't be holding a camera in this right hand, and so it'd be a lot easier to actually uh, uh, do this. But with one hand, I guess it's okay. Right, so here we go on to the plants at the back of the raised bed, and these aloes and castereas. Wartias, they can do with quite a bit more water really than uh, my cacti that I have at the front of the bed. So all these plants at the back here getting a nice summer rain. As you can see the nozzle, it's really important that the water uh, showers with, you know, uh, a relatively gentle stream of water that is probably the, uh, the best way of watering the plants from the top and uh, what you don't want is you know a really strong powerful jet of water because a it'll uh, you know, wash out all the substrate and b it might also uh, actually damage your uh, plants. Okay, so let's move on to some of the pots. And here I'm going to turn down the strength of the water. Shower again a little bit. Oh, that was too strong. Wrong direction. That's better. Okay, right. Adjusted the amount of water again. And here's a bunch of agaves in pots. That same method. I'm just watering these pretty much until there's water, you know, coming out of the uh, bottom of the pot. So in, in a lot of cases I don't actually have a uh, pot sort of saucer below at the uh, bottom of the pot. In some cases I do but here as you can see I don't. So let me just water this one a little bit more and you'll very soon see the water coming out at the bottom of the pot. Right. Same here. And a couple of the cacti. Again, a nice summer rain. That, in this case, you know, the, these uh, cacti don't mind at all getting a bit of rain from the top. Some others, like this Astrophytum, I'm actually not going to water too much from the top simply because. Um, um, it's a little bit more sensitive to getting, you know, fully wet on the epidermis. So I'm just going to primarily soak the pot. Here's a agave, Victoria Regine, this one. Uh, then this beautiful little fellow cactus. Again, I'm not going to actually shower the, you know, into the, um, the central growing axis of the plant, mainly also because it's got this beautiful woolly, um, you know, decoration, if you like, around the areoles and the spines at the top, and uh, no point actually uh, getting that all wet because um, it won't look quite as nice anymore, quite nice and fluffy as it is right now. So I'm just going to water only towards the the uh, the base of the plant in order to you know basically get the water into the pot here's 
a nice Echino Cactus Grizzoni. And this is the, uh, you can see this is a cultivar, the Brevis Minum. And uh, it's got these uh, quite attractive uh, short um, spines that are kind of, you know, bent backwards. Um, but it's also got a beautiful central growing axis with quite a bit of, you know, this woolly fluffy hair around the spines on the areoles. And I'm not going to actually water straight into that because again it'll uh, it'll just ruin the uh, this this nice fluffy appearance and so you know there's no need to shower that one from the top it's perfectly okay to be just watering around the the sides of the plant onto the pot and that again you know is enough water there for this plant some of the larger plants like these uh, pharaohs, these, this is a pharaoh cactus glaucosense and uh, you know, it's quite a large plant in a, in a bigger pot and uh, this one is getting a fair amount of water because it will take up quite a bit of water of course as uh, you know just being a much much larger plant right same goes for these uh, Echinocactus gruzones the uh, golden barrel cacti and again I'm not gonna shower this one right from the top because you know you can see again the, uh, the top is just wonderful, wonderful, fluffy, uh, sort of hairy, woolly areoles, and uh, I don't really want to uh, <laughs> disturb that beautiful appearance and growth, so no need to uh, shower water over the central growth axis of these, uh, these beautiful plants. I can just... shower the water nicely just on the sides of the plants into the pots and that's because you know the water watering nozzle is uh, providing this nicely gentle water pressure and uh, and, and water uh, flow okay so that's what I'm just gonna carry on doing and I'm going to bore you with every single pot in my collection here but uh, let me maybe just move up to a different type of plants here these are my lophophoras and uh, again I water these just simply from the top let me just get the hose I need to pull that a little bit okay and uh, I'm just going to start watering actually I need a little bit more water pressure here so I'm gonna there that's perfect I'm just gonna give these loves a little bit of a summer rain there there we go In the pots. These guys are going to get a full drenching today. And uh, we've got a nice spell of warm and sunny weather at the moment, so uh, the substrate is going to dry relatively quickly within probably two days or so. It's going to be dry again. Another part of my collection here with the uh, the pots. Uh, this is these are the thello cacti, and uh, again, you know they're going to get a little bit of summer rain here. So pot by pot, you know here is the watering going on, and 
That does the trick. I'm also quite frequently asked, how often do you water your cacti? And of course, we've got to distinguish between, you know, on the one hand, the dormancy period, the winter months, versus the growing period, the summer months. And there isn't really a straightforward answer, to be honest. Unfortunately, you know, all I can say is make sure that your cacti are not overwatered. Now, during the cool dormancy period, during the cool winter months, a lot of cacti will actually not want to be watered at all. They really want to just basically sit out, if you like, the cool, the often darkish time of the year. Now, when it comes to the winter months and when and how to water, if at all, please go ahead and check out the video that I have on my channel that focuses on caring for your cacti during the winter. But in short, the majority of our cacti really do not want to, do not need to be watered during the cool winter months when they are in a state of dormancy. Things change, of course, when we start moving into early spring and cacti will slowly wake up from that dormancy period and they will need to get some moisture, some water. And that's when we can slowly start increasing the amount and the frequency of watering. But is there a golden rule of, you know, every seven days, eight days, nine and a half days, that's when I need to water my cacti? Well, no, there isn't. It really depends, and you've got to experiment a little bit yourself. It really depends a lot on the type of plant or the type of cactus. Some cacti really do need and want a little bit more water. That's especially the epiphytic cacti. So epicacti, the ones that have the sort of leaves, if you like. And those are cacti that normally in their original habitats grow, you know, as epiphytes. So in forests, on trees, uh, a little bit like orchids. Now, when it comes to the majority of cacti, those that actually originally come from quite arid, dry, hot, sunny environments, they will need a lot less water. And if there is a golden rule, then I would say it is, you know, make sure that your cactus, the substrate that your cactus is growing in, actually fully dries out before the next time that you start watering again. So, you know, generally do not keep your cactus in a um, constantly moist and constantly wet substrate. They really don't like that. Make sure that after every watering, you allow for whatever it takes, a few days, a week, two weeks, for the substrate to completely dry out for a few days. Now, the frequency of watering will also depend a lot on the size of the pot and the type of substrate that your plant is growing in. If you're using a mineral rich, so a very well draining substrate, which is what I do, then you will also have that substrate dry out much, much faster. And so the frequency with which you can water is usually much higher than if you're growing your plants in a relatively soil rich, you know, less well draining type of substrate. And of course, the pot size, obviously, the smaller the pot, the faster the substrate will dry. So if, like me, you've got a collection of cacti that, you know, some are growing in quite small pots, others are growing in really quite large pots, then it's probably not a good idea to use the same schedule for all of those pots, for all of those plants. You need to water the smaller pots, the the plants growing in those smaller pots more frequently than those plants that are growing in the large pots. Oh, and by the way, it's also the type of pots or the material that the pot is made of that can influence how fast the substrate actually dries. So in terracotta pots, typically your substrate will dry much faster than in plastic pots.
So depending on the type of plant, depending on where you're growing it, whether in the full sun or in the shade or half shade, depending on the type of pot, terracotta versus plastic, depending on the substrate, fully mineral or less mineral, depending on all of those factors, you will need to work out a watering schedule. But as I said, in the growing period, in the summer months, make sure that you're watering properly, allow the substrate to dry out properly, and only then water again. You know, one of the reasons, uh, I've explained this in other videos before, one of the reasons I actually uh, put these uh, granite chips kind of as a top soil, you know, top grit into the pots is that it nicely keeps the parts of the substrate that float quite easily, uh, keeps that part down, prevents the... Uh, uh, you know, the, the substrate from washing out of the pots and uh, so in that way the water, you know, can actually soak into the pots much, much easier. Okay, so what else can I show you? Up here on the slightly higher uh, growing shelves here I've got my uh, Corifanta collection, and uh, let's just go ahead and water these as well. These are all getting a nice shower from the top. Corifanta elephantidens, some younger plants, and a beautiful old mature plant. This, the younger ones are okay to just be showering nicely from the top. The more mature plant, I'm just going to be watering only on the uh, pups on the side and into the pot. I'm not going to actually, uh, again, wet the top fluffy areoles of the wonderful plant. And, uh, you know, even, even if you, uh, if one um, pours water, showers water over these uh, areoles with the, uh, the woolly sort of bits at the uh, central growth axis, the water will generally, um, Pearl off quite quickly and nicely and also dry quite quickly again as well off these plants. Then I've also got my cacti and hanging baskets and they of course also need to be watered and the only thing here of course to remember is that as I'm watering these hanging baskets there will very quickly be water running down the uh, the plants of course and through the uh, the bottom of the baskets uh, and that means that the plants below will get a little additional water so that, that's just something to uh, for me to watch out for and um, you know especially because if there's too much water of course running down onto the plants below then something to watch out for that the uh, substrate dries fast enough. Here's my tray with the old men of the Andes, the uh, Oreo Cereus gang that I have here. <laughs> and again same same procedure really just uh, you know watering from the top and uh, that's a quite good dose of water that these uh, columnar cacti here need. They are, of course, larger and have much more 
um, you know, surface area. And so that means stronger uh, precipitation, stronger evaporation. Uh, and because of that, of course, they'll also uh, you know, need a fair amount of water. In this case, again, there is a saucer, if you like, at the bottom of the, uh, the tray, and that tells me when that's filling up, then I know that, you know, the water has actually percolated through the substrate and has, uh, you know, I've got enough basically watered in the, in the uh, tray in the pot for the plants to uh, have their roots nicely uh, moist and nicely, um, you know, ready to be taking up water, humidity, moisture. So there you can see that, you know, I've, I've watered basically until the saucer is now full. And uh, that is about the right amount for me to have given these thirsty Oreo cereus columnar cacti. In the same way as I've watered my cacti, you know, I'll go about watering my euphorbias. Same procedure, really, just filling pot by pot. And uh, in this case, the euphorbias actually quite enjoy a nice shower of, of rain again. So they'll get plenty of water coming now again you know from the top as as do my codex plants the codex forms just being nicely drenched if you like from the top a nice summer rain to uh, quench their thirst Here's a hanging pot, which I'll just water carefully as well. So people have asked me, uh, how long it takes and how much water I require for my entire collection. Well, it takes about an hour, roughly, for me to water the entire collection with this method that I'm just showing you. And in terms of the amount of water, it's uh, between 140 and 200 liters of water, probably, for uh, all the plants. You know, I, I really am a big fan of watering my plants, sort of showering them from the top, if you like, rather than soaking the pots. Um, it just gives me more of, a, uh, of an interaction with the plants, really, because as I'm watering them, I can also, you know, basically just have a quick look at each of the plants that shows me uh, you know, are there any pests? Are there any injuries? Any Is there anything wrong? Is everything okay? Are there new buds coming? Uh, are there old buds or old flowers that I need to, uh, uh, you know, once they've dried, uh, w whether I need to remove them, uh, etc. So it just is a matter of personal taste. But as I say, that's how I do it. And I find the interaction by watering each one individually and from the top that gives me that sort of you know maximum interaction if you like okay I hope that was informative I hope that was interesting and I hope that 
you've seen how I go about watering my collection of cacti and other succulent plants. If you enjoyed this video, which I hope you did, then why not leave me a like? Why not leave me a comment? And if you haven't yet subscribed, then it'd be fantastic if you subscribe to my channel. It's a great way of supporting this channel. And there's lots and lots of other videos on many topics around growing cacti and other succulent plants on the channel. So as I say, please subscribe. It would be fantastic to welcome you to this community. Thank you so much for watching. As always, thanks so much for your time. Hope to see you very soon again. Take care, stay safe, and happy growing.